So in this video, we're going to be looking at Hess's law, right, and how we can do some calculations involving the standard enthalpy change of combustion and formation data itself. And if we were to start off by looking at the Hess's law simplified example, I've got here a journey from Manchester to Munich, right, and we know that that has a distance of, let's say, 1,100 kilometres itself. Let's say if I were to go from Manchester, but then in this case, I were to stop off at Amsterdam and then go to Munich itself, right, we'd have a distance of 500 kilometres kilometers added to a distance of 600 kilometers itself and so what we can say is that overall right to get from Manchester to Munich there's two ways and those two ways right they're going to have equal distance to each other so we've got over here right route one going from Manchester to Munich and then route two going from Manchester to Amsterdam and then going to Munich itself as well and so we can see right that route one is equal to route two and so we know right that the total distance going from Manchester to Amsterdam to Munich is going to be 1100 kilometers which is going to be equal to root one itself now why is that actually important well when we look at hess's law there's a rule that we can come across in chemistry that the total enthalpy change of a reaction is always the same no matter which route is taken and you might come across this term slightly modified where it says independent of the route actually taken itself and so let's say if i wanted to find the enthalpy change of reaction in this case of let's say let's go with the root one which is what we'll call it over here we know that if root one is equal to root two right going from nitrogen dioxide Oxide to nitrogen and oxygen gas itself we know that that is going to be equal to going from nitrogen dioxide to lots to form nitrogen monoxide and oxygen gas and then to form nitrogen and then oxygen gas itself as well and so what we can say is is that this value added to this value itself is going to be equal to this value over here right based on that rule so let's say if you were to make an equation for this because that's what you need to be able to do if we go along an arrow in chemistry we add values if we go against arrows we subtract values itself but in this case right to find the enthalpy change of a reaction let's say this is the start of our journey i'm going to go from zero right so i'm going to take enthalpy change of reaction being equal to zero and then we're going to add a value which is going to be 114.4 kilojoules per mole and then again we're going to add a value for this minus 180.8 And so that gives us a final value of minus 66.4 and that's going to be kilojoules per mole itself as well. So yeah, that's how we can actually calculate an unknown reaction enthalpy by looking at existing enthalpies of reactions. Let's say going from this to this over here and then going from this to this over here, right? By saying that this is all going to be equal to this itself as well. Now, the reason why that's important is, is because another way that we can indirectly calculate enthalpy change is we can actually take, right, standard enthalpy changes of combustion and formation data and we can form these little cycles and we can calculate values for that as well so let's see if i was dealing with the following example alkenes they're saturated hydrocarbons with the general formula of cnh2 n plus 2 and the equation for the complete combustion of cyclohexane is shown below as you can see the standard enthalpy changes of formation right this data is actually shown in the table and we know that because it actually has a delta hf value over here and we can see we've got values for cyclohexane we've got carbon dioxide and then we've got water as well so here's what we need to do we need to take our original equation over here and we need to form a cycle based on that so i've got c6 h12 added to nine lots of oxygen and that's going to form six lots of carbon dioxide plus six lots of water itself now these values over here given to us is actually the enthalpy change of formation and so right we're looking at the energy required to form one mole of these compounds under standard conditions with all of the reactants in their standard states so in that case right if i were to write a balanced equation out to form both of these two that's where my arrow is going to point upwards i'm going to end up with six lots of carbon itself which is going to be a solid i'm going to end up with nine lots of oxygen itself right which is going going to be a gas and then I'm also going to end up with a hydrogen I'm going to end up with six lots of hydrogen that's going to be a gas itself as well so you can see here right i've actually got my cycle form my arrows in the correct order as well and what i'm going to say is is that this value over here with our reactants on that's going to be uh, minus 156.3 for cyclohexane and then it's going to be zero for oxygen right why is that actually going to be zero well in order to go from oxygen right to oxygen itself the enthalpy change of formation for oxygen is going to be zero because you need zero energy to go from the same thing to the same thing over here itself so you've got a reactant that's going to be in its standard state already right so in that case i end up with minus 156.3 over here for my reactants and then for my products i'm going to end up with right six times by minus 393.5 
I'm going to end up with that value added to minus 285.8 and then times by 6 itself as well, right? So I'm going to add these two values together. And so, right, what I can actually say is, is in terms of my equation, I'm going to start off over here where this is going to be equal to zero. And I'm going to say that the journey going from here to here is going to be equal to me going from here all the way around here, being sure to add and subtract along the arrows as well where needed. So in that case, right, I know the enthalpy change in this case, in this case, is going to be the enthalpy change of combustion, what we're actually calculating. That is actually going to be equal to, right, zero. And then because we're going against the arrow over here, we're going to subtract minus 156.3. So I'm going to do minus minus 156.3. And then that's going to be adding, because we're going along the arrow over here, we're going to add, right, the value of 6 times minus 393.5 added to minus 285.8 times by 6. I simplify that down to minus 4075.8 itself. And so I can actually end up calculating a value for my enthalpy change of combustion. And my value for the enthalpy change of combustion, right, in this case, if I were to move everything along to one side, is going to be equal to minus three nine two zero and then that's going to be kilojoules per mole itself as well now just remember this value is going to be negative because it's the standard enthalpy change of combustion and so you know that's going to be correct in terms of the sign itself as well now i've got here an example for you to have a go at feel free to pause the video and have a go so in this next example then we've got some more enthalpy change of formation data we can see because the question actually tells us and then the table actually tells us as well and we're asked to calculate the standard enthalpy change of formation in kilojoules per mole and so if that's the case right i've got a reaction over here i'm not going to bother drawing out the full cycle i'm just going to draw part of one using the actual equation itself and i know that i can actually form the reactants or the products right either one's the same because we've got the same balanced equation uh, we've got the same products and reactants on either side so in that case right i'm going to need to have in there um, one and a half lots of uh, nitrogen itself so we're going to have 1.5 lots of nitrogen gas and that's going to be in its standard state and then we're going to have that reacting with one lot of hydrogen gas itself and then we're going to also have right in there 3.5 lots of oxygen as well right so this step actually just shows us uh, the journey of our reaction itself so in that case, right, if I were to actually start off with parts of my calculation, I know that I've got nitrogen dioxide, which is going to be plus 33.2, and I've got three lots of that. I'm going to have that added to, right, minus 285.8, and I'm going to have one lot of that. And then I'm also going to have for my products, right, in this case, I'm going to have nitric acid, two lots of that, so that's going to be two times by minus 207.0. And then that's going to be added to 91.3 itself as well, right? And so if I were to form an equation, right, I know this is going to be zero over here. That's the start of my reaction. I'm going to work my way around and we're going against this arrow over here. So we're going to subtract. We're going along this arrow over here. So we're going to add. So we know the enthalpy change in this case of this reaction is going to be equal to zero and then subtracting. Uh, minus 186.2 itself and then what we're going to do next is is we're going to add because we're going along the arrow again and we're going to add a value of minus 322.7 and so i'll put that in my calculator and what i end up with is 136.5 and that's going to be kilojoules per moles itself as well and so there's our answer for that one now moving on feel free to have got the following question again you're not actually given a value over here for one of your enthalpy changes of formation you have to work backwards here so yeah if you were to go over this question then right we've got a table again standard enthalpy changes of formation but this time we don't have carbon dioxide and so we do actually have an enthalpy change of reaction equation as well so again i'm going to draw out my arrows to begin with for my products and for my reactants and how we can form them from their elements in their standard states and so in that case right i'm gonna have two lots of nitrogen gas itself i'm gonna have uh in that right three lots of oxygen gas i'm also gonna have in there four lots of hydrogen gas and then i'm also gonna have in there one lot of carbon itself as well right so if that's the case right what we can see is that we actually don't have a value for carbon because that is going to be a solid in its standard state and so the enthalpy change is going to be zero because we've got an enthalpy change for formation for an element in its standard state and then the same thing with nitrogen as well um the same exact reason for carbon so what we can actually do is take two and then times that by minus three six six and that's going to be for our reactants our products itself is going to be four times 
times by minus two for two itself. And there's our products. And then we're going to add on, right, one lot of X, right, to represent this carbon dioxide. And so if that's the case, right, if I were to form an equation, I've got, right, the enthalpy change of reaction, which is going to be equal to minus 630. And that's going to be equal to, right, I'm going to start off with zero. And then I'm going to subtract because I'm going against this arrow over here. Um, minus 366 times by two, which is going to be minus 732 itself and then i'm going to add because i'm going along this arrow over here a value of minus 968 itself and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually add that value to a value of x itself and then if i rearrange this very quickly right what i should actually end up with x being equal to is going to be a value of minus 394 itself and that's going to be in kilojoules per mole again so moving on then, what about if we're dealing with different data, the standard enthalpy change of combustion data? Well, in this case, right, you can see that I've got the standard enthalpy change of combustion data over here. The process is going to be quite simple. Uh, it's going to be pretty similar to what we did before. Now, let's say if I were to deal with the following, you can see over here that I've got four lots of carbon. That's going to react with five lots of hydrogen, and then that's going to react to form, right, C4H10, which is going to be uh, butane itself as well. And so if that's the case, right, what we can actually do is we can form a triangle. But this time our arrow is going to point downwards because let's say if I were to burn butane and let's say if I were to burn, uh, let's say, four lots of carbon and five lots of hydrogen, what I will form is a product of combustion, which in this case is going to be equal to four lots of carbon dioxide. And then that's going to be equal to five lots of water as well. Right. So you can see our arrow is going to be slightly different in this case. Now, if I were to look at carbon, right, I've got my reactants over here, which is going to be minus three, nine, three and then point five. And then we've got four lots of that. So we're going to do four times by that. And then we're going to add that to a value of uh, five times hydrogen, which is going to be five times by, and then minus 285.8 itself. And so, right, I can simplify that down in a second. But if I were to look at my products, I've just got minus 2876.5 itself. And so if I were to look at, let's say, forming an equation on this, bearing in mind I start off with zero over here, the start of my journey, I've got over here the enthalpy change of formation because that's what we're going to try and calculate is going to be equal to and then it's going to be equal to zero and then we're going to add because we're going along the arrow the simplified answer of minus 3003 and then we're going to subtract because we're going against zero in this case a value of minus 2876.5 and then i put that in my calculator and what i end up with is a value of minus 126.5 and that's going to be kilojoules per mole as well so moving on, I've got an example for you to have a go at. Feel free to pause the video and have a go. So in this question, we're told the enthalpy changes of formation can be determined indirectly from the standard enthalpy changes of combustion. The equation that represents the enthalpy change of formation of nonin is shown, and you're asked to calculate the standard enthalpy change of formation of nonin itself. So again, um, I'm going to move this over here. So I've got nine lots of carbon reacting with 10 lots of hydrogen. And what we end up forming is, is our product, which is C9, and then it's going to be H20 itself. Now, if we were to look at this, right, we burn these reactants or we burn these products what we actually end up forming is is nine lots of carbon dioxide we form 10 lots of water and then there's our products over there and we need to think okay if i start off with zero over here look at my reactants i've got minus three nine four and then we're going to times that by nine and then we're going to add that value right two right minus two eight six and then we're going to times that value by ten in this case what I actually end up with is my reactants over there. For my products, I've got a minus 6125 itself. And so, right, in terms of my equation, the enthalpy change of formation in this case of non in is going to be equal to, and then zero added to my simplified value, which is going to be minus 6406 itself. And the reason why that's adding is because, again, I'm going along the arrow. If I'm going against the arrow in this case, I'm going to subtract. And so I'm going to subtract, right, a value of minus 6125. Put in my calculator and what I end up with is a value of minus 281 and it's going to be kilojoules per mole. Does that fit in with the data that I've got? Yes, it is because enthalpy change of formation, it's normally going to be negative because we end up forming more bonds than we do breaking in most cases anyway.